Today on this show, it's a little bit different. We're talking about something that happened to us unexpectedly on a trip that was pretty profound for the both of us. Hey, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Yeah, we had an interesting day last week where we run across the uh, and we had this really, really good time. And we're going to be talking about native plants today native landscape and it's a little bit different than our normal row by row but it's really important and it's really interesting and we hope you enjoy it as well but before we do that look at there folks romaine lettuce growing your own food better than that growing your own salad mm -hmm. as i call as i tell this right here to people this is your caesar salad recipe right here all it takes is a little fertilizer a pot believe it or not so anybody can grow this fertilizer a little organic fertilizer and of course we've got to have some good lettuce seed and look how much lettuce you can grow right, and that's only one two six plants six plants mm -hmm. six plants holy cow huge they're at the stage now where you can actually cut the heart out of them but yeah a lot a lot a lot of lettuce seed. so thought we'd show that to you guys because we're all about helping you grow your own food. And a lot of people this time of year miss the point that you can grow your own salads. Right, all they think it's too cold. Yeah. And they can't grow anything. Yep. And if you've never experienced these homegrown romaines, boom. And if you don't like Caesar salad or romaine, these butter crunches, man, they're delicious as well. Great, great, great. All right. So we were in Tipton uh -huh. picking up the trailer to go pick up the onions. And we went by the Wiregrass Farmer's Market, which is usually only during the spring. Just on a whim. We was going by there and seen the sign. So we pulled in there and they were having a plant sale in the fall. And we met... Mary Alice. Mary Alice. Mary Alice is the president of the local chapter of the Georgia Native Plant Society. We didn't even have a clue this thing even existed. But when we got there, we seen all these plants there because we've been doing a lot of work in the last few months on herbs. As you followed us along very much, you know, we're putting in a new potage garden. <clears throat> and we're going to include a lot of these medicinal herbs in there. And I had also, on the side where I have shade, wanted to put some native plants. Um, so I was just really excited when we ran into them. Yeah, so the real cool thing about native plants is they don't take much care. And uh, them being native to uh, where we live is, is just going to be a great addition to what we do. I have been interested somewhat about native plants for years and years and years. My first introduction to native plants was a native azalea. Mm -hmm. If you've never seen a native azalea, you don't know what you're missing out of. They bloom just a little bit in the springtime of the year. And the sad part about native azaleas is most of their habitat has been, I mean, with logging and things like that, have been took out. You'll see them a lot in these bottoms and everything. And if I'm driving by in the spring of the year and I see a native azalea blooming, I just about have to stop. You know, I tried to um, get some and root them yep. last year when we were down in Florida. It yep. didn't work out. Northern Florida has a lot of native azaleas down there. We got... Uh, a little bit of land down the road down there. We've tried to keep some of that habitat conducive to native azaleas. There's a few down there, but I wish there were more. But it has been logged several years ago. Land has a way of healing itself sometimes, and that helps a lot with these native plants. But what we're going to talk about today is there is so much that we can do to be good stewards of the land and be responsible so that we leave this place a little better than what it was when we came over here or we got the place. So we're going to throw up a link here, and this is to the Coastal Plain chapter of the Georgia Native Plant Society. Now, if you're in Georgia, this is great. Um, if you're in another state, just search for the, a Native Plant Society and find the one for your state. Because it's really important, if you're going to do this, that you find the plants that will grow in your area. And you can't find them a lot of times at the box stores. Sometimes the local nurseries will have them. But in this link, they have information on plant sales throughout the state of Georgia and where you can actually, not only plant sales, but I think you can order them. 
you can order some seeds and you can pick up plants because they have these plant sales bro but education is a huge right. huge they thing. have all kind of publications and their event calendar where their next meeting is their partnerships they're partnered with the botanical garden in atlanta and they have all type of activities and also you can become certified as a native plant specialist. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. So I just want to read their mission because I thought this was important. And, and Mary Alice talked to us, what, for maybe 30 minutes that day? It was a long time. We had a bunch of questions. We did. <laughs> so her mis the mission of the Coastal Plain chapter is to educate the public about the importance of native plants to our health and well-being as well as pollinators and other wildlife mm -hmm. um, to promote conservation and preservation of native plant habitats, habitats by encouraging planting of native plants in landscapes, woodlands, parks, and garden. And on their side, they have a big thing about community gardens and in the suburbs actually planting native plants and how to go about it and even get funding for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're about growing your own food here. So we're really specialized in vegetables and all this stuff. The reality is not many of these plants are really native. What is a native plant? What is a native plant? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me read you the, the, uh, what a native plant is. It's those plants would have inhabited a particular region for thousands of years arguably grown plants that were present in a particular area prior prior to a European settlement. Mm. That was before Christopher Columbus. How about mm -hmm. that? Grown naturally in a particular region without direct or indirect human intervention is a native plant. So one of the questions I asked Mary Alice up there is yarrow a native plant? And she said, no, it's not. It is a naturalized plant but it is not a native plant. So a lot of these plants that we are acute, uh, used to nowadays, our mind plays tricks on us because we think they've been here all this time and they've not. To get back to what actually is native plants does takes a lot of research and education there. And they have them all listed on this website. You have annuals, ferns, ground cover, perennial shrubs, trees, and vines. Mm -hmm. Now they particularly focused on the plant settler on perennials, which is the majority of what we see in, in forest, although these native trees as well. And, but uh, perennials, they so much more perennials than they are any other type of native plant there. And the good thing about them is pretty much anybody can grow them because mm -hmm. they're native and they're a lot low maintenance. And even if you don't have a green thumb. Yeah. So let's look at a different aspect of native plants. If you've kept up with the news very much lately, you know that the monarch butterfly recently got put on the endangered species list. And the reason for that is because of the native habitat that has been lost in the last few years. Now, if you don't know what a, a monarch butterfly is, when we were kids, we seen them everywhere. Mm -hmm. But come to think of, you don't see near as many as you used to. So, you know, these habitats, if we could do our own little bitty small part to do that would help with these. Also, the bird population has been on decline for, you know, a number of years. And we all know about the honeybees and the bumblebees and the pollinators and all that. So this really is a win-win situation. You can't say anything bad about trying to establish a native part of your homestead. That's just being good stewards of the land. And it's also enjoyable if you get into the right mindset. Then you can enjoy all the butterflies and yeah, birds yeah. and bees. It's not necessarily always as pretty as what we're used to with these suburb landscapes where everything's got to be manicured. That's not what a native area looks like. It's going to look a little different there, but you got to get in the mindset. That's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to accomplish there. And it also helps the environment with water runoff. It helps the air it's quality. It's a filter. It's a, what people don't realize is it's a great filtering system to filter what contaminants we may have before it gets mm -hmm. into our groundwater. And it's low maintenance mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Yep. We put in a wildflower section uh, a couple of years ago in a big area there that we're not using and we've enjoyed it immensely. But you have to get in mind, it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be a few weeds out there mixed into it, but you know what a weed is? 
a weed is just a plant out of place. So you got to enjoy the weed sometimes mixed in with your native plants and just enjoy life. Don't get hung up on everything having to be perfect. Yeah, I get hung up on that sometimes. You get hung up on that sometimes. Yeah. And that's a natural thing that people, you know, they, they fight this all the time. It's just like in our gardens, you know, it's nice to look at a garden that's weed free. Mm -hmm. But the reality is sometimes, you know, there's going to be a few weeds in there. We can still get a good harvest off plant. So just trying to, to live with nature instead of going and get fighting it. Back in my day, when I used to work with a lot of the wealthy clients out there, we fought this issue all the time. They wanted everything perfect. And it was really hard on the environment. And it was hard on me over a period of years trying to, I was getting paid big money to try to I, I'll go against nature 110% to create this landscape that they wanted. And it was just bog you down. Man, over a period of time, it just wore you down because you knew you weren't doing the right thing. The, every weed in the grass. Every the weed grass. in the grass they wanted out and all this right here. You know, it's like our spring weeds in our lawn. Everybody Nature wants will take care of it. Everybody wants them out. But the reality is that's what feeds a lot of our pollinators. You know, when I was coming up, we used to have wildflowers galore in our road on our ditches our, 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 by our roads. But nowadays, the county oh, we the live right -ways. in, yeah, the right of ways, the uh, nowadays, here, the county we live in, a lot of the other counties, they spray pesticides to kill all, Everything. all the broad leaves so that they can cut down on their labor issue as far as mowing the right of ways. But what that does is it takes out a huge habitat for our pollinators or our butterflies and their beneficials and things like that. So I know this is getting a little off topic, but it's okay. If you're in a position where you can't have a voice to your county government, you know, bring this up that they may are doing the wrong thing for our environment. Maybe we're spraying too much on our water right of ways, and maybe we should encourage these pollinators and these native plants. Because what's going to happen to these native plants if they're growing in a right of way? They're going to get sprayed and they're going to get moved. Boom, they gone. And where was it when we were headed to North Georgia, we saw all the right of ways with the wildflowers. They are doing, so this is a good thing. You know, I hate to be so down and out, but they are doing a lot of good work with the wildflowers on the interstates. Mm -hmm. the, so the interstates with the State Department of Transportation, Transportation are encouraging this wildflower develops and they're putting funds and resources toward that. And that's wonderful. But you know where the problem is, is when you get off that interstate and get on that two lane road, it's just the opposite of that. And that's where we need to work on that instead of, we need to have more of that, what's on our interstate on our little two lane roads, instead of doing all the, taking away of all our beneficial plants and natives and things like that. Amen. Preach Amen. On. Preach on brother. Yep. Preach your grace. It's something that's really happened in the last 10 to 15 years. It's amazing to me the progression we've made on that. We went completely backwards on that subject in the last few years. And it's 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 hard. It's hard. So let me show you a few things I got yep, from the plant sale. Oh, that's good. So the first one is called Comfort Root. It's can be called Big Thicket. Um, hibiscus or pineland hibiscus and the frost does not kill this one it's in the mallow family mm -hmm. it blooms summer to fall the flowers are creamy yellowish and has a deep red uh, center grows in a moist garden area and can live up to six years in sun to part shade so i'm going to put this down there close to um in the shaded area in our new garden area yeah, you know, as much as we love a Roselle hibiscus, Roselle hibiscus is not native to South Georgia, but this particular hibiscus yes. will be. All these are native yep. to Georgia. And this, this one kind of looks like a dead plant, but I'll show you what it looks like. This is white swamp milkweed. And this is known to be a good host for the monarch butterfly. Yep. Anytime you say milkweed, we know it's a good plant for the, for the butterflies. Blooms May to September, and again grows in sun, part shade, moist to wet soils, attracts not only butterflies, but native bees and honeybees. Mm -hmm. And the last one I picked out is called Wild Burg 
bergamot. That sounds good to me. Um, it's actually a bee balm in the mint family. Mm -hmm. It's a perennial with aromatic leaves to make tea. And it was used in uh, medicinal areas for respiratory ailments. Mm. So it's actually an herb. The blooms are pale lavender, and it also can take sun to part shade. Got a little powdery mildew on it right there, but it'll grow out of it. You see, the new growth is not as effective as well. If you taste it, it tastes like mint. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the good thing when we talk about disease and insect with these native plants. They have natural defenses in them to be able to fight off these diseases. So, you know, it even smells. When you chewed it up, I got a wolf of that. A wolf. Strong. A wolf of a wolf. it. Uh, these native plants fight off, have natural defenses for insect and for diseases. So they're really good about lowering your maintenance mm -hmm. as far as, you know, having to do anything to them. And they don't need very little fertilizer because they're used to living in our native right. soil. Or pesticides. Or irrigation. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. So those are some great things. So what I would encourage you to do, and everybody, just, I say everybody, just about everybody that's got any acreage out there has got some spots that they're maybe just mowing or that doesn't really have, they're too not wet. using. Maybe it's too wet, maybe it's too shady, whatever. Use those areas to try to incorporate a native plant part aspect to your homestead. Right, so go to the website and you can find the list of native plants for on this link for Georgia and find one that will work for your area. Yeah, and also I went to the one in Florida. So Florida has got a, a, a website as well. They actually have seed sales on their website. Oh. So just about every state out there has some type of society or club or whatever for these native plants. We are actually going to join our local club here for the educational aspect of and to support them as well. So. You know, it's a little bit different thing, but I think it's interesting. I think it's worthwhile and a worthy subject that we need to do more of. Even though we like to grow our own food, boom, we should also be good stewards of land and encourage good, good pollinators and being able to grow things that are going to be helpful to our monarch butterflies and our pollinators. And here for our children in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, you could also, if you're landscaping a new house or you're re-landscaping, Try to incorporate some of these native plants into that landscape. I think you would be better served as well. Garden of the week. All right. Garden spotlight of the week, folks, is Terry Barnett. And Terry is from Crosby, Texas. We love our Texas folk. Zone, garden zone number nine. And Terry, I'm going to find here this picture right here. Let y'all guess what that is, because I know what it is. That's his asparagus right there. See this asparagus? It's like a fern. He and Terry and George grow asparagus, squash, potatoes, okra. I think this is his okra right here. Yep. Okra. And he's got some nice raised beds. And look at there. He's got asparagus growing in a raised bed, which is not a bad idea at all. At all. So thank you, Terry, for... Uh, Sending us your pictures in, and we are showing a garden spotlight of the week for Terry Crosby and, excuse me, Terry Barnett in Crosby, Texas. Texas. Yep. Zone 9. Yep. Thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. And for the folks that have not watched before, we are doing the old goat drawing. The old goat is hidden here on the set somewhere. And if you find it, put your comments below. Put it in the comments below where you found that old goat at, and next week we will do a drawing for the old goat. Mm -hmm. Send a coveted prize out. And and do you know the old goat's going on vacation? That's what I hear. The whole month of December. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, we might have to find a replacement. Anita Baldwin is the winner of the old goat oh, Anita, from last they, week. They comment on our lives. Yeah, so Anita. Anita and Stan. Yeah, Anita and Stan is the winner of the old goat. Anita, send us your... Address to custserve at .com and we'll get you something in the mail. Yep. Corny joke. Corny joke. What did the butterfly say when it got attacked? Butterfly away. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy got me that one. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> A butterfly away. Horrible butterfly. corny. 
All right, folks, thank you for joining us. Hey, enjoy your native plants. Learn more about them. If you're like us, you're just getting into them and learning them. Hey, it's interesting. It's fun. And what else are you going to do on these long winter nights? Short. Excuse me. Long, short days. Short days and long yeah. winter nights. Now, thank you for joining us. Now, it's time for you to get outside and get dirty. Mm -hmm.